Good morning. This is a video tutorial for Excel assignment number six, your yearly budget projects. I'm going to be following the step-by-step -step instructions uh, located in Google Classroom. If you would like to follow along, here we go. First, I'm going to go to page layout and I'm going to change my page layout to landscape. To do that, I'm going to go to Page Layout tab, Orientation, Landscape. It says to set your margins on the left and right for half of an inch. So I'm going to stay in the Page Layout tab. I'm going to go to Margins, and I'm going to go to Custom Margin, and go ahead and set my left margin to half an inch, and my right margin to half an inch. I can leave the top and bottom the same for now. Hit OK. In cell A1, I'm going to insert a heading. My heading is going to be my name, so your name. In this case, I'm going to put Chris Rubens. But again, you should put your name, yearly budget. It says to merge and center this heading across columns A through N. So I'm going to highlight from A through N. I'm going to go to my home tab and I'm going to select the merge and center button. That's going to place my heading. It's going to center my heading across columns A through N. Change the color of the cell and the, the color of the cell and the text color. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to highlight this and make it a blue color and I'm going to change my text color to white. Select the entire row three by clicking on the actual row number on the left side. Then right click on the selected area and choose format cells. Go to alignment and ensure that all of the settings are set to horizontal general, vertical should be bottom, text control, We'll select wrap text and text direction should say context. Once you have that set, go ahead and select OK. We're now going to add table headings just as they appear on the handout in Google Classroom. I'm going to go ahead and start with my column headings and insert month, rent, electric, gas, water, home internet, cable, cell phone, car gas, car insurance, food, entertainment almost there and now I'm gonna put a column where I'm gonna be able to add up my total expenses be able to determine my income per month and lastly what my savings per month will be which is obviously important underneath the month column I'm gonna go ahead and fill in each of my rows so I'm gonna have a row for each month January, February, and Excel should be smart enough. If I highlight January and February, it's going to go ahead and it's going to fill the rest of them down for me. So again, I did that by highlighting January and February, going to the bottom right corner of those selected cells where it turns to a black plus sign, and then I just drag down to December. In addition, in addition, in cell A17, I'm going to go ahead and insert a, uh, a row heading called Titles. And in A19, 20, and 21, I'm going to include the following in bold. Number of hours worked per week, weeks per year worked, and rate of pay. 
And this is going to help me make some adjustments to my table later on. In addition, like I mentioned, we want this to be bold, so I can do that up here in my home tab. In the font tab, in the font table, I'll just hit bold. And I want to make sure that everything's in the correct um, font. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight my table. And I'm just going to change my font from Calibri to Arial. And I'm going to make sure that we're in size 11. Now we're going to enter the borderline just below the headings in row 3. To do that, we're just going to highlight this row, row 3. I'm going to go up to my borders, and I'm just going to select bottom border. Sorry. So I'm going to highlight my cells in row A3 through N3. And I'm going to insert a bottom border by going to my home tab, going to the border tool, and selecting bottom border only. That'll add a border underneath row three. I'm also going to insert a borderline on the right side of column A. So for that, I'm just going to highlight from A3 all the way down. A15. I'm going to go back to the same tool, and instead of bottom border, this time I'm going to select right border. I'm now going to double click between columns A and B so that my so that there's plenty of room for that row for each of those rows, and then I'm going to go ahead and size it back so that it fits, just giving a little bit of space for the number. I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to adjust each of these columns by doing the same thing. So between B and C, if I double click, it'll, it'll narrow my rank column. Same thing for electric, gas, water. And we can do this for each of our cells um, until we have a desired look. So in this case, like home internet cable, I don't want it to be on just, um, I don't want it to be on three lines. I might choose to set it up where I'll have home internet oops, excuse me, on the top and cable on the bottom. Cell phone, car gas. Again, I could shrink that row slightly. Car insurance, I don't want the E on that second row or on that third row, so I'm going to go ahead and spread that out a little bit. Food, entertainment should be all on one line. Total expenses. I can just add that S back in there. Income per month looks good. Savings per month looks good. And so I'm happy with how my how my table's looking at this point. I also want to make sure that everything's going to show up on one page when I print it. So mine looks good for right now. But just to make sure, we're going to go to File, Print, go to Page Setup and then just click on fit to one page wide by one page tall and select OK. And that'll make sure that when you print your final, your final work, everything will show up on this single page. We'll go back to our document now. So now we're going to go ahead and use formulas to calculate the information for our table. Remember, this is our yearly budget. So we are looking at each month what it's going to cost to live, here in San Mateo County um, so that you can get an accurate idea of how many hours per work you might need to work, how many weeks per year you'll have to work, and what rate of pay you'll have to get in order to live here. So we're going to start with adding some formulas. First of all, home internet and cable. We're going to use a formula here, just as it says on the handout. It says home internet cable is the cell phone amount multiplied by 0.75. So a formula for that is going to be equals cell phone amount multiplied by 0.75, right? Because it's 0.75 
of the home of, of our cell phone bill. Okay, we're gonna hit enter, and right now it doesn't it's not able to calculate that because it doesn't have values for cell phones. We're gonna also set a formula for car gas. In this case, it's gonna be the cost of our rent equals rent multiplied by 10%. So it's gonna be car gas, we're gonna figure costs about 10% of what we pay to live each month. Car insurance, which we also have to pay for, is they're gonna be our rent, and we're gonna multiply it by 0.15. Food is also gonna be a factor of our rent, so we're gonna say equals rent, multiplied by 0 0.20. So 20% of our, we're gonna factor that our food costs about 20% of what we pay for rent. And lastly, entertainment. We'll just say that we're gonna, on, on a monthly basis, we're gonna spend about 10% of what we pay in rent for entertainment purposes. So this isn't too fun because as of right now, we don't have any values for these because we just set up formulas, but we haven't included what the cost of rent is, how much we pay for electricity, gas, water. Um, and so we need to get those, those numbers going. So let's look at our utilities. Electricity. It actually says that in California, the average monthly residential electricity bill is $88. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna insert $88 for electricity. It says that for gas, natural gas for like a home, the average monthly residential gas bill in California is $50. So certainly you might be able to get a little bit above that, right? Or you might wind up a little bit below that. Maybe your gas bills are going to be more expensive in the winter when you're using your heater, right? And less expensive in the summer when you're not. So again, we're just going to stick with an average monthly expense of $50. And lastly, Cal Water, right here in our local area, says that the average, uh, or sorry, the minimum meter charge per month is $39.84, okay? So I've now filled in my electric, gas, and water, but I still don't have values for everything else because I need my housing prices. So I looked up and found that the one-bedroom apartment in Menlo Park this year, on average, rents for $2,000, $972 per month. Now that fills in a lot of the rest of our, of our data. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in one more, which I'm gonna say our cell phone. I found on Metro PTS, we can get unlimited data talk and text for $50, right? So that gives us our expenses for January. Remember, we're only inserting this, month, this information into the month of January. Don't input any information into other months. Now to calculate the total expenses column, we also need a formula that will add all of the cells for the month of January, beginning with the rent, beginning with rent, and ending with entertainment. To do this, you'll use the auto sum feature that will create the formula for you. So this is pretty easy, right? In the total cells, in the total expenses cell for January. All we have to do is click on the auto sum feature up here at the top, and it will know to add those values for us. Right? It selected B4 to K4 for us. If it didn't, for some reason, select B4 to K4 for you, then just highlight and select B4 to K4 and hit enter. That shows us our total expenses for the month of January are $4,871.94. I know your table's still not complete, but that's okay, it will be soon. We now need to calculate your net income. How much do you have left to spend each month after you pay all your expenses? To do this, you must first calculate the number of hours per week that you will work, right? In cell H19, so H19, we're gonna go ahead and insert that the number of hours per work week we're gonna work is a standard 40 hours. 
we then need to figure out how many weeks per year you'll work, right? So there's 52 weeks in a year. The question is, are you going to work every week of every year or do you want to have some weeks off for vacation, right? For right now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert 52 weeks and work backwards, knowing that, okay, at this rate, I would be able to, I would have to work every week, right? But maybe if I'm able to make a little bit more money, I can work a little bit less. All right. So again, we just put that number in H20. Again, if you're committed to having at least two weeks off per year, then you could have 50 weeks here. Again, your choice. I'm going to stick with 52 for now. And lastly, we must figure out how much money you'll make. In San Mateo County, the current minimum wage is $12, right? And I'm just going to go ahead and say that, you know, by the time we're working and out there, the minimum wage, minimum wage will have gone up. And so the rate of pay is going to be $14 per hour. Okay, now you have enough information to calculate the rest of your table. So to calculate the monthly income for January, you must multiply the rate of pay located in H21, so how much we get paid, by the number of hours worked, which is going to be 40, by the number of weeks in January, which in this case we're going to say is 4. Your equation should look something like this equals our rate of pay multiplied by the number of hours we work multiplied by four weeks. That gives us our income per month. The last thing we have to do is we're going to figure out our savings per month. So in this case, we're going to take, we're going to equal, and we're going to take our income per month minus your total expenses for the month. And we're going to hit enter. Once you've done all the formulas and filled in and information filled in for the month of January, now we just need to fill in the rest of our table and we'll be done. So you will now fill in the rest of the table by using features in Excel that make it quick and easy. First, you need to fill in the entire rank column. To do this, select B4, select copy, or hit Control C on your keyboard, then select cells B5 through 15, and press Enter. Now we're going to do something, the same thing in the electric expense column, but a different feature. Select cells C4 through C15, and then go to the editing tab and go to fill down. Fill in the rest of the columns using either technique you just learned. So I'm going to take a second and again I'll just go ahead and I'll Just grab all of these formulas. Oops. Let's just stick with it. So. Uh, it doesn't like that I've got a formula, so I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this. Oh, it doesn't have a uh, value yet, so that's okay. So we'll just give it a second. There, now it's got its value. All right, so again, everything is the same, but it's important that we don't just type in the number because we want to make sure that we've got our formulas through and through. So watch what happens now. In the income 
let's see, our total expenses, I'm going to fill that down. And my income per month, if I fill that, it's not going to know where to get that information from. What I need to do is I need to set up an absolute cell reference. So to do that, right, because this information is down here and it doesn't know where to get it for each, for each line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click back into M4 and I'm going to insert a dollar icon in front of and after the H for each of uh, for each of those. Now, if I do the same thing, control C and then enter, it's gonna add that up for me. And then this formula shouldn't be a problem. We get the same number. So again, using this cell reference technique makes the cell just look at one cell, right? Cell reference, one cell to get the final like to get the final final number. Real quick before we go any farther, let's move to cell A40. Go ahead and type your name, type your last name. Go ahead and file. Save as. Let's save this into your folder. I'm going to call mine so it's going to be in budget. You should do the same. The last thing we need to do is we need to insert formulas to calculate our total below. So this is going to give us our data for each, um, for the whole year, how much we're going to pay in rent, how much we're going to pay in electricity, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to use the auto sum feature. And then all I have to do is I'm going to copy that. And I can just do it this way. We're almost done. So take a look at cell N17. This number represents how much savings you have at the end of the year based on making $14 a month at your job and savings. Make a mental note in your head of that number. That number is going to change a lot from what you're expecting. First things first. The sad reality of our area is prices are going up. Let's go ahead and in June, there's going to be a $100 rent increase for the rest of the year. So go ahead and add $100 to your rent. And we are going to have to include that rent for the rest of the year. Unfortunately, our savings per month just went down. Take a look at cell, o, cell O17. Oops, sorry. So again, you can see that this cell, this in N17, it affects just a $100 rent increase really affects our savings per month. Now move back to cell 821. This is where we have our rate of pay. And let's change the number. Let's say that we got a better job or we got a promotion and we're instead of $14, we're making $20 per hour. How did that number affect, your, affect the number in cell N17? Essentially, what you're doing here is we're changing the rate of pay and determine what's going to happen to our savings per month, how many hours per week, how many weeks per year, and how much money we need to make in order to save some money each month. The other thing I want to highlight really quickly is in case you get a little a, a sign like this, it's really important we need to expand our column width so that you can view the entire, um, all of the data. All right, so you can just always make sure that um, 
that you've got that going. The other thing I'm noticing is that you're, I'm showing some decimals right now, right? And I can, I can uh, adjust that simply by going up here to my number, my number tab and going ahead and I'm gonna, sorry, decrease my decimal so that I don't have any, I don't need cents here, right? We'll round. And then the last thing is, and everything in this column is actually, we're talking about money here. So let's go ahead and add an accounting number format, right? And we're gonna do dollars in English, all right? And again, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna minimize that. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to Reset these tabs so that it looks so it looks good. I see. All right, so there we go. So on the last page of the assignment, there's a few questions to answer. To do this, you're gonna to need to change the rate of pay number until you find the correct answer. To do this, remember that you're gonna change the number in cell H21, right, until the number in N17 changes to the correct amount. In A25, you're gonna begin writing your correct answers. So you can just go ahead and put number one, it just said correct rate of pay back to $14. How much money are you in debt at the end of the year? So if I set my rate of pay back to $14, I can see that I'm $32,668 in debt. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write a complete sentence that says, if I set my pay back to Fourteen dollars. I will be thirty-two thousand six hundred and sixty-eight dollars in debt at the end of the year. Number two. What is the rate of repay of pay required to end up with approximately zero dollars total savings at the end of the year? So this requires a little bit of playing, right? If I put in twenty-five dollars per hour, I'm still in debt. If I'm in if I make $30 per hour, I'm still in debt. $31 per hour, oh, now I'm very close. So I can sort of, if you really wanna be a perfectionist, right, you can see that I need to make somewhere between $31 and $31 and a nickel, right? So we'll just go with about $31. So for number two, right, what is the rate of pay required to end up with approximately zero total savings at the end of the year? To end the year with approximately zero dollars in savings, I would need to make, actually I'm gonna say to make, because it's not approximately, it's just over. $31 per hour and work 40 hours per week, 52 weeks per year. All right, there are about nine questions, right, that I'm gonna ask you to answer here on the Excel sheet. And then I'm also gonna ask you to make sure you've responded to your blog at the end. Thank you very much. Hopefully this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing your final review.